Huh, I didn't expect for my I'm a senior, so I'm high and mighty compared to your lowly junior song to actually get important. Uh, yeah, you did expect it. You wrote the song. Oh, yeah. Anyway, what do you expect to happen? You asked me to come on for a song. I'm, like, so much smarter than you, Ryan. It's only a matter of time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Smarter than me? I, I don't know about that. You wrote the line, Ryan. Of course you know about that. Oh, yeah. Anyway, aren't I, like, three levels of math ahead of you? Uh, you're not even taking math senior year. Whoa, this is so uncalled for. Who even u- thinks to use that as a measure of intelligence? You do, Ryan. You wrote the line. Oh, yeah. Well, you got anything else to say, smarty pants? It takes a village. We all need to stay informed and we need to take action or else we're not going to have a planet to take action on. Nice. See ya. See ya. Oh, and start your college applications early. The end of my first semester of senior year was strange. I sent in my final applications at the very start of winter break and was done with it all. I was ready to party, which means go bowling, play board games, go to parks, watch movies, but everyone else was in the thick of it. So I visited New York for two days, heard a truck playing Here Comes the Sun on the radio, just steps away from where John Lennon was shot, carrying around a red notebook to jot down funny things people were saying on the streets, saw Hadestown, wrote a play called New Year's Eve Eve at Bread's Bakery, about this nice bakery I went to on New Year's Eve Eve called Bread's Bakery. (laughs) They had these wonderful almond croissants, and the back of the employee shirt said, true love for some reason. Then I came back to the state for lovers, hoping to get back to school to reconnect, and we were snowed out, and I was sad. Then we finally got back to school, and people were worrying about surging cases and finishing late work. When we finally finished the semester, and all the snow cleared away, and everyone was celebrating what they saw as the end of their troubles, and it seemed like the end of COVID as we know it was in sight, and we got a five-day weekend... All I wanted to do was stay at home and write. Am I a hermit? The writer who locks himself in his house to create his magnum opus, or more realistically, a crappy musical monologue. I've lived most of my youth worrying that my life is boring, not just because it makes me unhappy to spend my weekends at home, but because I worry I need an interesting life to have something to write about. But writing's a solitary ordeal. It's sitting alone in your room, staring at pen, then pad, then laptop, then wall, then ceiling, then feet, then pen again. Is a boring life better for writing? How many friends do you need to write a play? How many lovers to write a romance? And in 38 days, we had seven days of school. I don't believe in coincidence, only God playing little jokes pointing us in the right direction. This philosophy partially helps me get through inconvenience. If I can't get a can open, it means I was never in the mood for peaches. If somebody cancels plans on me, it means I would have had forgotten my gloves and uncomfortably stuck my hands in my pockets the whole time. If I get rejected from a college, it means I would never have fit in with the student body. It also points me towards George Mason, which happens to have a great program in theater education. Am I staying as my number one choice? Who knows? One drawback of my anti-coincidence philosophy is that I am very critical on things that are still in the air. I make myself hate something so that when it doesn't work out, I, I don't care.